Alrighty, so now that we've got the pond and the fence all ready to go, Raptor gets to spend more time outside. So this is our basically, well, it's still warm out, this is our daily routine. So first, I'm gonna clean up his droppings. And this enclosure design is super easy to clean up. You just simply wipe it. So once with a dry towel, go over it with a wet towel, and again with a dry one, and it's clean. Love this enclosure design. It's worked well because 99% of his poops have been on the shelves, which don't absorb anything. So quick and easy to clean up. So now we're gonna take Raptor out, get him outside, get him some fresh air, some exercise, and some UV rays. So first we gotta give him a little treat. Got a little Dubia Roach. <whistles> gotta grab the Roach there, Pancho Villa. There you go, good job. All right, he's got a little snack in him. Let's go take him outside. Okay, so he's got this awesome place to play while it's hot. The mink don't like to be outside when it's hot anyway, so it's ideal for him to be running around in the heat and uh, while well, the mink are just lazing in, and uh, in the shade. So he obviously can't be in direct sunlight all the time, so he has both uh, places he can hide in the sun and stay warm. So these little pipes, he can hide them right in the direct sunlight. He can lay in the direct sunlight. He also has shaded areas. So here it's shaded all day long, and so he can get out of the sun and cool off. And if he wants to, he can have a little hiding spot out of the sun. So yeah, this gives him the opportunity to uh, regulate his body temperature without necessarily getting the water. He doesn't have to do that if he doesn't want to. And he can, he can be out in the direct sun or in the shade. He can hide in the direct sun where it's warm or hide in a cool spot, wherever he wants to go. And uh, yeah, to keep the birds of prey off of him, we make sure the dogs are out while he's here so that uh, you know birds will be scared off and not wanna come down where the dogs are. So yeah, and we obviously keep an eye on him. We don't put him out here when we're not uh, available to, to kinda peek at him from time to time. It's a little bit touchy with him, his size now. I mean, he's small enough that a real big bird of prey could eat him. So it's a little bit nerve wracking, but honestly where we live, we don't have problems with birds of prey. People have chickens around and um, we've, we've, you know, obviously I'm the kind of guy that keeps an eye on the wildlife and I haven't seen anything big enough to really po pose a threat to him in this area specifically. So the risk is minimal, but we want to be as careful as we can. That's why we leave the dogs out. As he gets bigger, obviously the risk will get smaller uh, because he'll actually be able to eat the hawk if it comes down. So, but at this size, he, he is at a risk um, from avian predators. So we have to keep an eye on him. And like I said, use the dogs to help keep him safe. While he's out, he's just constantly moving. Uh, true to their, their uh, what they're known for, the Argus monitor's just roaming, roaming, roaming. He's climbing all around. We'll find him up on top of the tree there from time to time, sunning himself up at a high spot. But more typically, we find him just roaming around and, and getting exercise in his uh, in his nice big outdoor enclosure. So we're so happy to have this available for him. I sure wish we would have got it earlier on in the summer, so he could have spent most of the summer out there. But honestly, the earlier part of the summer, he was he was small enough that I was I was nervous that even like a magpie might hurt him. So it's probably better that we waited. But I'm happy now that he can get out here and get in the sun and and uh, enjoy himself. So let's let him go roam around. He's, uh, you can tell he's kind of enjoying the sun just sitting on my arm, but let's let's let him go wander around. Go have some fun, buddy. He sure loves it. He absolutely loves it out here. So we'll leave him out here to enjoy himself for the next few hours, and then we'll come back and we'll call him in for his uh, dinner, and we'll go put him back in his enclosure inside. We have to say thanks again to Ed the Pond Professor and the Aquascape team. They did an amazing job setting up the, this beautiful enclosure. Um, man, I love the pond. It's just gorgeous. And you can't even really call it a pond. It's more like a mountain stream. Absolutely love it. 
We have it off right now. If you've noticed, you haven't hear the, the water in the background. I shut it off for some training purposes and uh, I'll be turning it on again momentarily. But for now, I've just got it off because uh, of some training I was doing earlier with Boone. But yeah, absolutely love our Aquascape ecosystem and uh, Raptor. I think he loves it just as much as the mink because he gets to get out and really stretch his legs and soak in the UV rays outside. Um, but but still be contained whereas the yard was a little too sketchy letting him roam the whole yard even though it's most likely Lizard proof. I still don't trust it hundred percent this I trust a lot more But if he does happen to get over our fence, it's fine He'll just be roaming the yard and uh, sure trained to locate him So if worse comes to worse and we need to find him again sure can tell us where he's hiding five hours later What we've been doing is training him to come and practicing trading because that's something he, he really needs a lot of work on is, is trading his kill. So we got this little rat. What we're going to do is call him with it and then once he grabs it, we're going to trade him off on a smaller rat. These are both freshly killed. Uh, they're still warm and bloody so it's, it's tempting for him uh, just like we're out hunting. So both of them are just freshly killed just moments earlier. And uh, the idea is this one's too big for him to swallow. So we'll get him to trade off of it for this little fuzzy wrap. And uh, we'll be using the whistle to call him over. And uh, he's, like I said, he's had spent the last five hours roaming around here. So he uh, he's had you know plenty of opportunity to kind of stretch his legs. So now we're gonna call him in and feed him up. So that went real good and smooth. I have to admit, it hasn't been this smooth the last several times I've done it. <laughs> so whether he's learning and he's improving, or whether that was just good luck and he happened to have a good day, remains to be seen. We'll see if he's same way tomorrow or if he's actually improving but that was awesome super easy trade-off and he's looking for more so I think I'll do another one let me go grab another one let's do another trade he, he, he wants some more so let me go get another small rat you look so hungry I think I'll give you another shot huh Dog spooky. And see, this is how it's normally been. He sits and chews on it, and takes a sweet time. And so far, my method has just been to kind of be patient and wait it out. I. If this doesn't start showing better improvement, then I'll start trying other methods to trade him off of. But for now, I've just been trying to be patient and let him figure out it's easier to let go of what he's got and get a new one. And we'll see, I've got all winter to figure it out. I'm not in any rush. I can't really hunt him much anymore. I might have one or two more hunts for the year and then we gotta wait till spring. So might as well take my time and not rush things. If halfway through the winter he's not improving, 
then I'll start experimenting with other methods. <laughs> Look at him tripoding. I love that. He's watching the dogs. If you're wondering why he keeps tripoding, that's a common stance of this species when they're trying to get a better look at something. And he's a little concerned about the dogs. Penny, he's not familiar with Penny, David's dog. David's obviously the one filming right now. That's why Penny's here. And I think that's why he's so nervous because he doesn't react that way to my dogs. And none of my dogs look even a little bit like Penny. Like she's a very different looking dog from my dogs. She's white. I think that's why he's kind of being a little freaked out. I'm gonna try calling him again. Um, since he just ditched this and didn't even eat what I gave him, I'll try to give him another call. I did bring my thing to cover it up. I don't know why, he just doesn't like these little guys. I think they're gonna try opening it up so it's more bloody. There you go. Yeah, he sure doesn't like Penny. <laughs> it's funny, I haven't noticed him give that much of a reaction to my dogs. Birds of prey are the same way. There are a lot of birds of prey, especially like occipiters, that will totally trust the falconer's dog, but they see any new dog that's unfamiliar to them, and they are terrified. They act like they've never seen a dog in their life. So it's interesting to see Raptor doing the same thing as a lot of birds of prey, where he's, you know, relatively comfortable around my dogs, but Penny, man, he keeps giving her the leery eye, tripoding. He left his rat a minute ago. The only thing I could figure is it must be Penny because I haven't noticed him do any of this with my dogs around and my dogs are always around. So, kind of interesting. So yeah, that's our daily routine. Give them a good three to five hours of running around and exercising, soaking up the UV rays. And then I call him in, feed him. And uh, then depending on the time of day, I might leave him out for another hour or I might put him away. It's warm enough now. See, he's kind of heading over to sun. Well, now he's going to hide. but. He was looking like he was getting ready to sun. So I will leave him out for probably another hour and then we'll put him away. And how I put him away is I'll just come pick up these tubes. By the time the sun starts going down a little bit, he'll be hiding in one of these for sure. I just come pick it up with him inside, go walk him over to his enclosure and put the whole thing inside his enclosure. That way he doesn't have any um, negative experience with me putting him away. Even when I call him, uh, I'm calling him, feeding him and then leaving him in here to play. He doesn't have to think about, oh man, he's going to put me away if I come because I, I actually leave him out for another, you know, either 20 minutes to an hour after I've called and fed him. And then he sits inside and, um, you know, spends the rest of the evening indoors. <laughs>